What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video, we're going to be jumping into the Amazing Spider-Man issue number 9, taking us back to the events of the Hellfire Gala. We finally get to know what happened to Mary Jane, being controlled by the one and only Moira, aka Omega Moira, aka Moira Sentinel. And with everything going on with Judgment Day, Moira has been one of the few individuals that has yet to make an appearance. In fact, her and Orcus as a whole really haven't been prominent during this whole Judgment Day event. And so with this issue, we have the team up of Spider-Man and Wolverine. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you have liked this video. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up at the Hellfire Gala. The whole reason this Spider-Man was even invited was because of Wolverine. He did this more as a prank because the outfit that Spider-Man is wearing, Wolverine thought it would be comical to see him coming to the gala wearing this. Now of course, Peter Parker, he believes that he looks amazing. And so the joke is really just on them. To further that, he makes fun of Wolverine because because Wolverine is wearing a bolo tie. But regardless on why he had been invited to the event as a whole, he has his own personal reasons for wanting to be here. And that, of course, is because of Mary Jane. Now, as we all know, Mary Jane's aunt has been on the dementia medicine that Krakoa has been creating for everybody. She just recently had Norman Osborn go ahead and test it out, ensure that this medicine is in fact safe, as she makes her way into becoming an ambassador for the Krakoan medicine. She got herself an invite to the Hellfire Gala. But while he was at the gala, this is when Doug had come up to him, letting him know that Mary Jane was tapping SOS in Morse code. Not really sure if this is some kind of joke or what is going on. And that's when we learn what happened. The necklace that is around MJ's neck, that is in fact the hand to Moira controlling her, being able to kill her if she just squeezes. As Moira is able to make her escape, Wolverine sends Grey Crow chasing after her to keep tabs, keep her tracked down. And so with Moira making her way through the gateway, the mutants do a little bit of probing into Peter Parker's mind to find out exactly what happened leading up to the point of MJ leaving. Once they have all the evidence they need, we see Wolverine come back through the portal and he has a plan to ensure that MJ doesn't get hurt. He has a disc that was created specialized with an EMP that would take down Moira, or at least temporarily take her down. That way they can separate Moira's hand from Mary Jane's neck. He also went to grab Spider-Man's suit. That is what takes us to Paris, France. We are picking up with Moira and all the members of Orcus that are here to escort her. And while Moira is very much in charge of the situation that is ongoing. This is still MJ's body. And MJ, she is doing all she can to rebel against this control. At this point, they are no longer at the Hellfire Gala. MJ would very much like to go their separate ways, to call it a day and move on from this. But Moira is going to use her as collateral, a just-in-case situation. In case Spider-Man, in case the mutants do come after her, she has some kind of bargaining chip. But using the hand, squeezing it around her neck, MJ eventually gives in, but at a safe distance. That is where we see Grey Crow keeping an eye on the whole situation. That that is what takes us back over to Krakoa. Wolverine and Spider-Man, they are going to use Gateway's abilities to teleport them to Paris, France. Wolverine already knows that there is going to be a trap, that there are going to be Orcus agents waiting to ambush them. And so if they use some other means of transportation, if they don't use the Krakoan Gateway, they can use Gateway's powers to teleport them in. They can have the element of surprise. This will give them the upper hand. 
And so with Gateway opening up his portal, we see Wolverine and Spider-Man come from above them, catching them off guard, catching them by surprise. The two of them waste no time dismantling all of these really elaborate suits because the Orcus armor is stupid strong and Wolverine is restraining himself. He knows that Spider-Man is not one to kill people, but they are heavily armored, which means Wolverine can lay down some hate with all of the Orcus agents now on the ground, incapacitated and unconscious. Peter Parker has to ask, what do we do now? Wolverine letting him know that now it is time to wait. Of course, this isn't something that Peter Parker would like to do. He wants to go rescue MJ, and he wants to do it now. What he is unaware of is that this is all a plan set up by Wolverine and Mary Jane. Mary Jane would very much like to bring down Moira, and so she is going to lead them directly to Moira's body. She is leading them directly to Moira. Right now, they are just giving her a little bit of time to actually get there. With Greycrow keeping a tail on exactly where they are, he has a location, and now they move out. As they get up to Moira's body, Moira lets MJ know that you are free. Now that I am back in my body, you are free. But not in the sense that you believe, because Moira is going to free her from her mortality. Moira never had the intention of letting her go. She had every intention of killing Mary Jane. This is when Grey Crow interferes, throwing some grenades, coming in fully armored. He is bringing the pain. As we see Grey Crow knocked to the ground, it looks like he may be dead sitting there looking like there is blood all around him. That is when Grey Crow stands up to his feet. This all being a distraction. A distraction for Wolverine and Spider-Man. The two of them making their entrance. Spider-Man coming in throwing his EMP grenades. This is temporarily disabling the hand that was attached to MJ's neck. But it doesn't take long for the hand to get back up and it starts making its way back to Moira's body. The consciousness of Moira being in the hand, it needs to get back to the robotic body, upload its consciousness back into the body, and try to make a getaway. And that is exactly what happens. With Moira now uploaded back into her body, she goes in to kill Spider-Man. Lucky for him, Wolverine had stepped in the way, taking all the damage, saving not only Spider-Man, but Mary Jane's life as well. They try to use the disc, the one that has the EMP uploaded on it. But unfortunately, in all of the chaos, Moira is able to make it through a gateway. And so for at least today, the day has been won, as everyone goes back to do their own things. Picking up at the New York City gateway, we have Peter Parker and Mary Jane really having a conversation, not necessarily for the first time, but a conversation outside of the professional. After everything that they just endured, Spider-Man more than anything, he wants to have a real conversation with her to maybe grab some coffee, talk like they once did. But Mary Jane reminding him that she can't do that. She can't do it because of Paul, letting him know that it's not about him, but it's about responsibility. Something she thought Peter Parker would understand. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. When it comes to this issue, it was relatively predictable. You know, everybody went off to do their own story, Mary Jane was saved, Moira got away, but Moira is headed into Judgment Day. Not really sure what her role is, not really sure what part she is going to play in the grand scheme of things. And we have still yet to find out what happened six months ago with Spider-Man. At this point, we are nine freaking issues in, and they have barely hinted at what happened. Honestly, at this point, it's not even a topic of conversation anymore. It's almost as if they are trying to write their way out of it. As if they're trying to write as if it never actually happened. Like there are little hints here and there. But it's almost like they're recognizing that the fans are not loving the series so far. 
and so they're trying to distance themselves from this little hole that they created. I think the big problem with all these issues so far is that we're lacking so much context. We don't understand why Peter, Peter Parker's life has gone sideways. We don't know why he's on the outs with Fantastic Four and everybody else. Like, there is no true reason why any of this is happening. You know, like I said, it's relatively predictable, but it does seem to be moving a little bit forward. Hopefully, issue 10, 11, we're really gonna find out what has been happening with Spider-Man, what has led him to his life being in such turmoil. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to get caught up on everything going on with Spider-Man, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It is going to get you caught up on everything going on with this series. Now, if you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon having five different tiers from $1 to $50. Having perks like loyalty badges to me sending you free comics every single month. If you would like to help the channel, this is the best way to do it. Now, if you can't do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.